Hey everybody, welcome to the Thursday night stream. Going to be working on a brand new project, one that we've put off for far too long and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, we're going to start working on our Infinity Nomads project. Um, if you are fairly new to the stream or haven't seen me paint infinity before it's super cool so i think you're going to enjoy it uh for anybody who wasn't here last time we went ahead and finished up the lord ordinator from age of sigmar malign portents so he's all finished up got him on his super cool base from cyborg monstrous miniatures already and uh, I've got studio pictures up on the Jack Club's Facebook page. If you want to go check those out, see them in nice color corrected HD. Keo, what's up? How's it going? Uh, cool. So today is uh, Tactics Thursday. So we're going to be talking about a few things, just kind of free for a minute for right now. Might talk about uh, 40k, might talk about Shadespire, might talk about some Infinity. It kind of depends. Um, I was thinking about kind of letting you guys decide and ask questions of anything you might want to know about that kind of cool stuff while I'm sitting here painting. And uh, I'm going to try not to get too, uh, too tutorial heavy today even though this project is meant to be kind of a tutorial because um, Infinity is such a great game and the models are so amazing. Um, I wish more people would get into it because it's um, actually a really easy game to learn. It's just got a very high skill ceiling, similar to 40K. Um, the entry price for uh, Infinity is much, much lower which is really, really good. And the, um, the kind of upkeep price for Infinity is much lower. And kind of, kind of what I mean by that is with 40K, the only real way to get into 40K is at the lowest, probably about 500 points, maybe closer to 1,000 points, which is going to end up being something like a start collecting box or you're just going to go into a games workshop and pick out some boxes to, to build your army and um, most of the time you're not going to be able to get into 40k for under 100 bucks it's just not going to happen um, I think the star collecting boxes are something like 80 to 90 dollars um, I haven't really checked the prices recently but that's kind of what I kind of what I remember but then you got you know, paints and uh, codex which is going to be 30 35 40 dollars right there so you, you're just not going to get into the hobby of 40k under $100. It's not going to happen. Whereas with Infinity, it's much easier to get into the game and stay in the game for a lot cheaper. And um, that is mostly because it is a smaller scale game, not in terms of the miniature size, but uh, in terms of how many models you'll be using to play. And I mean, like... Just, with, just like with 40k, if you want a massive collection of stuff, like if you're just in love with a faction, you can definitely build a, a huge collection of stuff. But when we're talking about models on the table, at the maximum uh, like standardized point level, you're probably not going to have more than uh, 10 to 15 models. Um, and that also depends on um, what format you're playing. If you're playing the like organized play format, um, you're not allowed to have multiple groups and a group in infinity is uh 10 models so or 10 10 unit entries so um it's called limited insertion but uh with just like open play by the book rules you can have multiple groups so for some factions you can definitely have a lot of dudes in your army if you wanted to I don't even know who that dude is, so I can't help you. Lord of Wedge, what's up, man? Um, so, for example, I've got my Infinity Nomads uh, Bakunin uh, starter box right here. Uh, let's see. I don't think this one came with it. I can tell you right now that like a box 
like this, which is your starter set, usually comes between uh, six to seven models for every faction, um, probably about 50 bucks. And that's because it is a starter set. So you're gonna get like the most models in a box set that Corvus Belly does. Cause most everything else is done by unit. And the maximum thing that I usually see is around four to five models, maybe more if it's like little teeny tiny bots or something that come with the unit entry. But the sectoral or faction starter box is what you're gonna see. It um, comes with six models, sometimes uh, maybe one or two more depending on which faction it is. Um, and that's all you need. You can take these models, uh, create a list out of it, and start playing the game immediately. And because each unit has so many different um, loadouts, uh, you can have even more points value out of them. Like this uh, uh, Riot Girl right here, for example, has a bunch of different profiles. The uh, the Reverend Moira right here has a bunch of different profiles. So these these two models right here can represent six to eight different profiles right off the bat. And um, what I mean by uh, staying in the hobby, like upkeep price is also a lot cheaper because most of the time you're only ever gonna need to add maybe one or two models uh, as you're tweaking your list. And because Corvus Billy still does blisters, like uh, one of the models we're painting today, like this uh, Cassandra Kusanagi uh, character. Um, these are also really cheap, like usually under 20 bucks for a single um, a single blister. So a lot cheaper uh, most of the time than uh, what you're gonna be seeing out of 40K. Oh, the Raptors, oh, okay, I got you. Cool. Yeah, I could take a look at it, Lord Wedge. It seemed fine before I uploaded it, but um, that could have just been my setup. All right, so um, gonna get into painting. Talk about these minis. I've already put uh, Cassandra together. She's on her base here. She comes with this little piece of uh, terrain that she's uh, is kind of her like little flying stand because she's like jumping in the air as she's uh, shooting her little rifle. And then I just took some texture paint, put it down real thin on the base, and cover that up with some liquid green stuff. So once we paint over that, it'll end up looking like some uh, some asphalt or some uh, some concrete for like an urban environment. Tons and tons of basing options for Infinity out there. There's base toppers. There's resin bases. Um, I didn't really want to get into any of that because these guys are going to be kind of like a demo army. And so I wanted it to be like as easy as possible, like show how easy it is to get into Infinity. Um, and I just did the same thing on this uh, 40 mil base for our uh, Bakunin Swast big bad dude. So he's just gonna go right in there like that, he flew right onto the base. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mount him onto the base. I'm not gonna do anything uh, super fancy like sub assemblies and stuff like that with this project. Cause like I said, I want this project to be kind of a demo and show you guys how easy it is to uh, make your infinity stuff look really nice and be on the tabletop real fast without too much effort. And uh, for any of you guys who've been on the channel for a really long time, you've probably seen me do some infinity before way back when we first got started out. Um, so you'll kind of know a little bit about what I'm going to be doing. And you see me kind of do more intensive infinity painting with like sub assemblies and resin bases and all that kind of cool stuff. But for these guys, we're just going to go super simple and get these guys done to a really nice standard without too much effort. stick in there. I might need to put her down one more. Like that. Cool. Should be able to hold her just fine with just this bit. I can try having the handle on there. Every time I've tried to use this, it's been a little awkward because it's so much taller than little rubber cups that I use to mount stuff on. So I want to make sure to keep everything 
right in frame. Oh, that's pretty cool. Strike from the shadow stuff is neat. Go ahead and get our compressor going. Get our airbrushes going. And we're gonna get to painting. Simple green cleaned out of the airbrush. Yeah, I gotta need gonna need an interval save on your HQs. If I ever played Mordheim, uh, Mordheim I believe was discontinued by the time I got into uh, playing miniatures games. So no, I have not played it. Um, but I can kind of describe how Infinity plays, and you can tell me if that's um, at all similar. Uh, so Infinity is uh, generally labeled as a skirmish game um, because you're only ever going to have, uh, av on average, you're going to have about 10, 10, 11 models on a table at any given time. Um, you generate orders for each unit. Some orders are normal, and some other orders that are generated are a little bit different. Uh, for example, some units are um, impetuous, which means that they generate an impetuous order outside of your normal order pool, and impetuous orders have to happen first before any other orders uh, go out, and they always have to move towards the uh, closest enemy model because they're just like um, really like jazzed up and want to get into the fight. Then um, you take your order pool and you flip over an order and you can issue a single action to um, any given model, um, which is uh, something like move, move, uh, move and shoot, uh, do an action and then move, do an action, then shoot, or any, any combination of those two things. Um, once that is resolved, you can go down your order pool. And if you want to, you can issue all of your orders to a single model, or you can spread out your orders across your army um, to do different things, accomplish objectives, make attacks, uh, move across the board, put down uh, like smoke grenades, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then your turn is over once you have spent your last order, and then it goes on to your opponent's turn. Um, I'd say one of the big mechanics that um, sets Infinity apart, especially in my mind, is the mechanic of automatic reaction orders, or AROs, as people call them abbreviated. And um, the way that they work is that if it's not your turn, anytime your opponent issues an order and does an action, you receive the opportunity to do an automatic reaction order for any of your units that gain line of sight. And I really like this because one, well, it's the main, the main reason I like it is because there's never a time in Infinity where both players are not engaged with the game, uh, which is one of the things that uh, I really like about it. And it's one of the things that I wish games like Warhammer 40k had because um, Warhammer 40k is very much like it's my turn, I'm gonna do all of my stuff, 
and you basically don't do anything until I try to attack you. Um, so there's huge swaths of the game where um, I, if it's not my turn, I'm just completely unengaged with the game, just not doing anything. Yeah, so unfold. It's it's that's that's a fairly good way of describing it. It's um, it is a science fiction game, but its rules and its game mechanics are much more centered in reality uh, than uh, stuff like 40k. Um, its game logic is much more centered in reality, and really the only thing that's super fantastical or science fictiony about it is the setting and uh, the fluff and the look of things. Yeah, that, that's definitely a mechanic that we that, that used to be prevalent in those games, especially like Necromunda. You had um, stuff that would um, maintain between game rounds if you were running like a, a narrative game or something, which was uh, definitely kind of cool. Uh, Infinity is more, it is a skirmish game, but it's, it's actually more of like a tabletop war game. Uh, but just with less models. Uh, because of the way that the game mechanics worked, if there was a if, they, if you had as many models on the table as you did with 40k, then the games would last an eternity. Um, and I think one of the reasons I really do like it is because the games are so fast. It's like games are lightning quick um, because of the way uh, it works, which is really, really nice. And I like talking about it and I like painting stuff from Infinity because I like to dispel a lot of the kind of myths that surround uh, the game as being like too difficult or being too complex to get into. And I also like to dispel the myth of uh, metal miniatures being like super hard to work with or paint. Um, Because these models, while they are metal, they're amazing models. They're super well sculpted. The details um, out of this world. Um, and I would just like to see it. I'd like to see it more. Um, I'd like to see more people get into it and enjoy it, because it really is a great game system, and the the models are uh, so so much fun to paint. Just get to go at it at a little bit different, different attack than you would with uh, a 40k mini. Just because one, they're metal, and two, the way that they're sculpted is different. Because uh, 40k is in a heroic scale, and heroic scale is different than um, standard scale. Because in heroic scale, like thing, things like hands, feet, heads and weapons are out of scale and they're larger than they normally would be. And um, with Infinity, everything is a more realistic scale. Is this really not gonna? I know this is just a 40 mil base, there it is. These models are actually really, really easy to work with if you front load some of the hard work. And what I mean by that is that generally the main problem that people have with working with metal minis is they say, oh, well, they're really hard to put together. Or, oh man, I don't like working with them because the paint likes to chip off. Stuff like that. And Paint chipping off of models is actually about the same 
even if you're working with resin or plastic. Um, so if you have a good primer put down and you're careful with the models, then you're not gonna have to worry about paint chipping off. And the main thing you gotta do with metal minis is you have to clear coat them. If you don't want that paint chipping off, you gotta clear coat them. And I try to, I try to reinforce that even with all the plastic one, plastic minis that I paint because clear coating your models not only makes them just look nicer at the very last bit, but also just protects them because you don't want your paint uh, scraping or rubbing off or chipping or whatever. I want that to last a really long time. And as far as front loading stuff, when you're working with metal minis, um, the number one problem that I've had with Infinity is if I am lazy when I'm trying to assemble them. And what I mean by that is that when you get these models, you really should soak them in a bath of uh, like mineral water, mineral spirits, um, paint thinner, or like rubbing alcohol even works. Just because even though they are metal, they do have a kind of like very silky, fine, powdery feel to them. And that's just part of the mold release. They use a different type of mold release for, for metal minis like this. And so they're gonna have that super soft, kind of silky, powdery feel to them when you pull them out of the, out of the package. And you wanna get all that off of there because it's gonna make the uh, super glue not wanna, not wanna cure as fast as it should. So if you do that, that's, that's a big step out of the way. It doesn't take very long. Um, don't even have to scrub it like you do with resin. You just gotta, you know, rinse them off and they're totally cool. And the other thing is that when you put stuff together like this, you want to score the pewter with like a knife or a, like a scribing tool or something like that. Just put little, little scratches onto the uh, inside of the, uh, the joining peg, like the female end, and then the, uh, the peg itself. So that way it helps the uh, super glue bind to more than just two flat surfaces touching each other. And they'll go together like super easy. Like it took me maybe 10 minutes to put both these people together. Cause you just gotta, you just gotta do a little bit extra effort right at the beginning rather than not doing it and then sitting there getting upset that they're not going together. Super easy. And then I think when we um, move on to uh, the other minis in this project and I start assembling more, I'll, uh, I'll do some assembly on stream, even though I know sometimes that can be boring for some people. Um, it might be helpful to assemble some of these guys on stream so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and, exact and, and how easy it is if you just do what you're supposed to do. Let's look at this guy. Let me kind of get him on camera and see, because I don't, I don't see anywhere that doesn't have primer on it. Keep turning him around just to look. It might be a couple of teeny little things kind of on the underside. Yeah. So let's just get a little bit more primer and go over it one more time. Yeah, sevenfold. You're not wrong. Like just a couple of more minis. Can make a game last a lot longer um which is why i kind of i'm i'm one of the people that thinks that um organized play for for warhammer 40k should actually go down in points from 2k because 2k in many ways um kind of breaks the streamlining of eighth edition uh, because people are bringing in all these new combos and with the, re the vast reduction in point costs across the board for units, you can put a lot more models on the table. Um, and with the formations not having any kind of unit tax, like the, uh, uh, well, not, uh, so the attachments don't have a, a unit tax like the old formations used to. 
So you can basically just put whatever you want on the table as long as it fits in any of those attachments. And with everybody playing at 2K, um, you're just kind of undoing all of the streamlining that's taken place because just the physical time of adding all those models and dice rolls to everything just kind of breaks the streamlining of it. So I think that for um, organized play, we should go down probably all the way down to 1500 uh, to make games still be competitive, but not take three hours just to get to round three and have all these games ending on round three. Because that's what everybody's like not wanting to happen in tournaments anymore is where you uh, have these games that don't even go to turn three or don't don't go to turn four. And it's because we're playing these massive point games that's undoing all of the streamlining. We need to go down. Okay, so we got our stuff primed. Let's rinse out our airbrush. Just gonna take this off and stick it back in the simple green because we're done with our big boy airbrush. We're gonna switch to our small detail airbrush. So I'm just gonna put this back in the simple green, kind of wipe off our uh, detail brush a little bit, get it hooked up to the air, and spray it out. start doing some pre-shading and we're gonna do the lion's share of all of the work on this model just by pre-shading and the color scheme that I'm going to be using for this forest is going to be a little different than their box art. I'm going to be going with kind of a black with uh, orange complementary color and then our second complementary color is going to be uh, blue, like a very light blue. up in the trigger housing because it's bubbling. Try to get all this stuff out of there. Let's see what I'm talking about is you see it bubbling right there. I want to get all that out. So now we're going to go with um, a pre-shade. We're going to be using multiple colors to pre-shade. And let me pull off this handle so it's easier for me to hold this guy on screen. Um, and what we're going to do is just establish the majority of our highlights up through a grayscale. to almost pure white. Try this color. So I haven't, I haven't used this mecha color before. We'll see how it compares. Yeah, it'll work. Actually, I might want an intermediate gray in between that, so let's pull out Stonewall gray and see how it compares. Yeah, I probably want that a lot. I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull out these four colors. So we're going to start off directly over the black with German gray. 
Then we're gonna go up to neutral gray. Then we're gonna hit it with stonewall gray. And then finally, we're gonna hit it with white gray from Mecha color, which is an off-white color. And then if we decide we wanna go up to pure white, we can definitely go up to pure white for some final highlights. And we're, we're just gonna appreciate this entire model using these grays. Well, both, both models technically. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us our entire range of highlight using the grayscale. And then when we wanna add color onto areas, we can just glaze our color over it and it'll have all that beautiful shading and highlighting contrasts already done for us. So that way, all we have to do is just glaze on some of our other colors and then do some nice clean edge highlights and some little detail colors and they're done. Voodoo Shield, what's up, man? Just about to get started on our Infinity project. We got our guy here. We're just gonna go with a really simple, like top-down top-down highlight for our airbrushing. Just gonna start coming in, hitting top surfaces of everything at a top-down angle with this German gray. Really light, really thin, just enough to have that gray pop up on there. Maintaining that high angle of attack all the way around. So we've got our German gray on there. I know on camera it's really subtle, but if we look at it from the top down, you can see German gray. If we look at it from the underneath, it's still pure black. That's what we're going for. Okay. here Oops. and we'll just do the same thing Okay, our German Grey on there. So we'll rinse this out. Maui Blood, what's up, man? 
Any cool lore? Um, I believe there are a couple of books, but I have not read them. And there are a couple of uh, comic books out there. Um, I haven't really dived into the like really deep lore stuff that's been published for Infinity. Um, just more from the uh, kind of like the wiki that compiles all of the lore stuff, like the basic information about the universe. Because I just like the the universe as a whole. Um, when I bought my US Ariadna army, there was a little booklet that came with it that had a bunch of expanded like starter starter kit missions and there was like a little lore section in there that was really cool and i really like that because my favorite faction is us ariadna and just how it talked about like what they have to go through living on planet dawn and um all of that cool stuff was was really interesting to me Uh, Lord Wedge, which one? Is it the, uh, the lady with the coat or the big guy? Which one are you wondering about? Uh, her name is Cassandra Kusanagi. She's a Reverend Moira. The Reverend Moiras are, like, super cool combat, uh combat nun type people that are like hackers and healers and things of that nature. She's a uh, like a reference to the uh, the major from Ghost in the Shell. So now we've got our neutral gray, and we're just going to come in and hit, hit hit it with that in the more predominant areas. Still leaving a little bit of our black showing through, a little bit of our German gray showing through. We're starting to have built up contrast, that neutral gray. It's already making a pretty big impact. I 
Yeah. You can still get her. She's for sale still. Oh, you got the sub? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big reader of the White Dwarf, so I, I haven't really ever paid for a subscription. Doesn't surprise me that it's, it's really expensive, though, given Games Workshop's track record. Stuff builds up on her like that. So I'll rinse this color out. So now we're going to go up another step to our stone wall gray. And with each successive step, we're just going to be tightening these highlights down. Getting that color contrast locked in there. It seems like it's not the fastest way of doing things, but that's just because I'm working with like a single or a, a pair of minis. When when you have like more models that you need to do this with, you're spending less time switching paint colors. So you can just go like dot, 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 dot on one mini, you know, do the same thing on the next, do the same thing on the next, do the same thing on the next. And you're probably out of paint by that point, but if you're not, you can just rinse it out really quick and then start over from uh, the opposite end of the little assembly line and it's it's actually really really fast to do things this way Okay So make sure I get this guy So we're gonna come with our stonewall gray I'm Just gonna keep hitting these spots
And this is where I'm starting to pick out more of our detail. Bringing that color in there. Stonewall green on there. Hello, Rick. What's up, man? How's it going?
Ooh, some Grey Knights. Keeping the Grey Knight dream alive. Man, I was gonna buy some volcano bases from you. And I looked at the sprues for the Shade Spire Dwarves, and they fucking sculpted the feet on the bases. I was, I'm, I'm still a bit salty about it. Cause I wanted some. I wanted to put my my fire slayers for Shade Spire on some like really cool uh, lava bases. And Games Workshop was like, nope. Ten paladins and two dread knights. Ooh. ooh. Gonna run a little bit of cleaner through the airbrush just to clean it out just a little bit. Make sure there's no dried stuff in there because we're gonna get into some tricky stuff in a second. I think corn would look good on lava as well. Especially the Elric spaces are very nice. They're not that they're not that hard to paint. Yeah, Grey Knights would be good for that. Grey Knights Terminators are very, very strong. Custodies would also be a good choice, but they're a little bit more points heavy. I think that's I think that's kind of where like Grey Knights have been relegated to, is as a supplementary force. I still think they're very strong as a supplement force, but Games Workshop kind of gimped them if you're running them by themselves. Got my ear where I want it. So now we're gonna come on, and this isn't this paint isn't a pure white, but it's gonna be pretty darn close. <sighs> so we're just gonna try to get the brightest. Where we want our stuff to be the very brightest.
Okay. Go. Ah, uh, no worries, Kyo. So now that we're done with that step, it's pretty much all we need the airbrush for, so we can go ahead and rinse it out. There it is. Yeah, paladins are still very strong. Set that down. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention that Jason sent me a set of his um, utility brushes. So I want to go ahead and pop those open. Check out these bad boys. Or at least the utility, yeah, utility series is what these are called. Got that new brush smell to them, so really nice dry brush. A smaller angle dry, I actually kind of like this. I'll probably get a lot of use out of this one. And we got some different sizes of basic brush, which I will probably end up using this one. Don't think we're gonna be doing much dry brushing on this project, so I'm not I'm not gonna mess with those right now. But I will probably use this guy. So we're just gonna go ahead and put our paint away and pull out our next set of stuff. And we'll need this. I 
Which one are you doing now? Mm. Yeah, I might end up using that one. And then, uh, 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 you, I only need you. Okay, cool. So, ooh, Elric with a sub. Ah, thanks for that sub, man. Some sub hype. The hype train has pulled into the station. All aboard. Choo choo. There we go. Very nice. So we're gonna start doing some glazing here to darken some stuff down and brighten some stuff up. Um, uh, let's see. So yeah, first I'm gonna do this. Get a teensy bit of black out, teensy bit of dark Prussian blue. We're gonna mix these two together into a super, super dark kind of blue black. And I'm just gonna thin it way down because we wanna be putting this on almost transparently. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So we're going to be using this to bring some color back and darken back down this kind of like exosuit stuff that he's got underneath his armor. So like all of the stuff in here. Let me cut off my compressor. So I don't want to go for just straight black. I do want to have a little bit of color to it. So you can see we're just kind of glazing this on there, and it's dark. And it's going to darken all this stuff up, but we're going to maintain those pre shades that we left in there. So the darks are going to get darker, and the brights are going to get a little bit darker, but they'll still show through. So we'll have the the contrast and we won't have to like sit here with two three different colors of paint to build them up we can just glaze this one color over everything and get this really nice like blue black gray look for this uh this like exosuit that's underneath his armor the armor paneling And I'm gonna leave just the largest of the the armor panels. Because we're gonna do those orange. Because I want my guys, instead of being the kind of standard nomads colors of like black, white, and red, I'm doing something a little different for mine. Uh, traditionally these guys the uh, swast guys are uh, or the taskmaster is what they're called the uh, taskmasters have like very bright white armor 
with a uh, kind of like black exosuit underneath and some little like red uh, pinstripe highlights on, on certain parts, but I want these guys to be a little different. So I'm gonna kind of keep the very dark blue, black, gray kind of scheme for the, uh, the undersuit, but for the main armor panels. Oh, thanks for those bits, Elric. Um, I'm gonna be glazing on some orange to like a really bright fiery orange is kind of a contrast. But we'll only be doing that for like the largest armor panels, so um, all this stuff in here is gonna get this treatment. And then when we come back to do our kind of like accentuating highlights on this stuff, I have a blue gray that'll work just fine for it. So we can just come back and kind of pick out our details with that blue gray. I think it's a dark blue gray. Um, Let's see, uh, I can do that for so we'll do this back like this. Then if you're wanting to do something like, I don't know, like, oh, maybe I want like the base color for this guy to be blue and I just want to get it done like really easily and then go in and, and paint all the other stuff separately. You can take a normal paint or, uh, and just thin it down with like a whole bunch of medium or flow improver and uh, just kind of like tent the entire model which is another really easy way to do things. Um, and they just come back in and hand paint over the uh, anything else that you don't want to be that color. It's, and uh, there's some paints that are already pre-made for that. They're called ghost tints. So if, you, if you're looking for any of those, you can pick up those. Um, Badger makes a really nice ghost tint set with a bunch of really nice colors. But I'm just doing it like this because I don't want to have to paint, put like base coats over stuff.
Oh yeah, get all the basic. That's a that's a tall order if you have a huge collection. Okay. So we've got all of that stuff glazed in, tinted. So I think now we can start coming in with our kind of orangish color. Start doing that. Start off with orange rust. Sure, I get all that blue pigment out of my brush here.
I think what I might need to do is actually go in and give something for this orange to stick to a little bit better. So we're gonna switch things up a little bit. I'm gonna continue to let that dry, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of base in a little bit these other panels that I want to be orange with this kind of like orange brown. up off of that because orange is going to be really finicky. I'm trying to do this with some alacrity so I think this will be fine. Plus with like the oranges you don't have to work too hard to uh, to glaze those up to a really nice fiery orange because you can just work in some yellow. That orange, it's model color orange, or uh, model air orange. It's not as not as dense as I thought it would be. But that's fine. Just gotta adapt a little bit. No big deal. Burnt umber. Ah, if I had that color, I could do it, but I don't. I think this will work just fine, though, since this is more just something to give our base orange something to stick to. Because I'm not going for like a like a earthy orange or like a primary orange. We're going for like a really bright kind of like fire orange, like kind of going up to fire lizard and then glazing up some golden yellow on top of that to make it even brighter. This will work just fine. I don't even know what this is. Oh, mahogany brown. Just picked a picked a red brown off of the uh, off the rack. Hell, if we wanted to, I could do like a military coyote brown based off of this if we wanted to ditch the orange idea, decided we didn't like it, but 
I don't know, I kind of wanted to do black and orange. It's, seems like a cool color scheme. Plus, like the real, the real military colors is more, it's more Ariadna's thing. You don't really see that with the uh, nomads. Yeah, that's a good enough piece coat. I also figured that me doing a lot of handwork on this would uh, be a little bit more accessible because I know not everybody has an airbrush. It's like, yeah, the pre-shade, I did it with the airbrush, but I mean, you, you can do a rudimentary pre-shade with, with a rattle cam primer. So it's not like totally out of the question. Um, and you can do all of what I'm doing straight off of like gray primer if you wanted to. It's just going to take a lot longer. Just that pre shade like helps us get like a lot of it, like it front loads a lot of the work that you would have to do by hand. Especially for all the stuff that we wanted to be like that blue black. Like we don't have to go in there and dick with it try to make that black look good. It's just gonna have that pre-shade do all the work for us. And then when we go in to do our teeny little detail highlights, it's like really all we gotta do to make it look finished. And for Kusanagi, since like her big old cape is just gonna be red, you can just take like a red, a red paint and just kind of like tint the entire thing and be done with it. And then spend a little bit more time working on the detail stuff for her. And that saves us, since like she's a 99% like fluttery cloth stuff, that's, that front loads a lot of the work because hand blending a lot of cloth like that is a pain in the dick, so I was not gonna mess around with it. And even on this stuff, like I'm not trying to get like 100% opacity with just this one coat. I'm just trying to get a solid base coat on there so that when we start working up our oranges, it's not gonna be it's gonna be easier on us because the orange is kind of transparent to begin with. Then we get it into a glaze, it, it becomes kind of a headache to work with on top of a really dark color. But it's one of the cool things I like about working with model color for stuff like this is that this paint is like really thin. Like I'm on the borderline of doing a glaze with it and it's just covering really, really nicely. Just what I needed to do. And we're not losing any, any detail because our paint's super thin.
Yeah, if we wanted to, we could have done um, something a little darker than this, but I think this will be easier on us if we, since we're going for like a much brighter orange. And I can always come in and like cut back in the shadows with like a, we can take like our orange and mix it with a darker brown. Or just come back with like a, our base orange and still naturally be darker than anything that we paint up. And just like cut back in the shadows. It's one of the cool things about Infinity is that it, since it's based in that kind of like anime art style, you can have those like really, really stark transitions between shadows and highlights. And you can just kind of like hand paint in the shadows and just like really like cut them in there super hard and it looks cool. Oh yeah, those Juggernaut Raiders are looking primo. this to get there we go yeah the more I look at this on camera uh, I think this is the right choice. It's gonna be really easy to layer up orange from this. Because this, this is kind of like a rust color in and of itself. Might need to switch which orange. I start off with my base though, because this, uh, orange rust from model air mm, I don't know I didn't it wasn't behaving like the uh, the glaze from the model color line so I might want to switch to a model color if I have it and work off of that first so I was expecting it to kind of stick like the uh, our little mix of blue and black stuck really nicely to all the, the exo frame stuff to leave our highlights showing through. And with that orange rust from, from Model Air, it was just kind of wanting to slip and slide all over the place and not stick anywhere, so. Might have to go back to the drawing board on, on that one. But otherwise, this is it's starting to come together a little bit. Because the point of this this whole thing is to like get your your infinity stuff like ready for the table as fast as possible. So that's why I really like doing that kind of like really in depth pre shade because you can do like a lot of of uh, work with just that. It'll save you a lot of time. And like if you look at this dude, once we block in all of the stuff that we want orange. You just put a wash on that and put him on the table and he'd be pretty darn close to done. Like he'd be definitely tabletop. Voltrex, thanks for that follow. Welcome.
Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I'm, I like the uh, the corn armies that are a little less like flamboyantly red. Those are a little, little boring. Kind of refresh your paint here. Keep on trucking. I mean, like, I think your stuff is looking fine, man. I mean, I, I always tell you the same thing that your bases don't look finished, <laughs> but otherwise, your stuff looks fine.
Da, da. So I think I can do this iron piece. Thinking about leaving the helmet as is with that kind of white look to it, I think that looks cool. Just as like a little bit different. Definitely want to do this big like harness piece though. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with your bases, man. Just like give them a dry brush with a lighter color so that they don't look flat and they'll be, they'll be great. You don't need to, you don't need to rebase your whole army. Yeah, like, it doesn't really matter what color it is, as long as it's just lighter than whatever uh, you used, like, whatever brown that is. Like, anything lighter looks fine.
Just a couple more little bits. See, I'm gonna get this one little hand plate just for some, some color separation out here. like arm guard gauntlet thing as well. Let's see, does it go all the way around? Yeah it does. Let's get the inside, that'll look nice.
cool. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. It's probably about all the all the orange panels that we need. Let's see, let's check it out real quick. Yeah, base looks much better, man. Cool. Ooh, time kind of snuck up on us. But. As far as building up our, our highlights on these guys, we did a lot of work. So, um, these, oops, stop doing that. Uh, so for this guy, um, when we come back, all we really need to do with him is just come in, do some, uh, probably just like one other color, maybe like a, a brighter blue or maybe like a brighter blue gray on some of these other like uh, material panels just to give a little bit more color separation to the model and then uh, we can come in with a light wash on these orange bits and then start glazing them up and then when those are done some clean edge highlights and he's good to go do his gun and his uh, his knife as well um, since the uh, the infinity guys have those cool like high-tech blades that do different things uh, we can just like airbrush a cool effect on it. Uh, do some little some little detail thingies, just give it some personality, and he's pretty much done. Like you really don't have to do a whole lot of bells and whistles um, to get these infinity models to look good, because like the detail in those sculpts is just amazing. And like with his little exosuit, uh, all that mechanical stuff, because we went ahead and did all of our pre shades, we have like pure black going up to almost full white and then we just color tinted it down a little bit and so we don't even have to put a wash on it like all of that detail has been popped out and has its own little highlight of detail i mean like some of the stuff like these little um uh these little like hexagon pieces in his like suit we might have to come in and do some little teeny tiny edge highlights to pick out those details uh and some stuff like that but otherwise he's like halfway finished and i mean um if you wanted to put a wash on that orange, paint his base, and he's tabletop. Like, you would not have to do a single thing more to him if you didn't want to. He's totally playable, and he looks super cool. Um, I mean, that orange looks really flat compared to all of the highlights on the other stuff, which is why we're gonna be doing some glazing and stuff for that. And so he'll just look even better. Um, and also, we'll try to work on uh, Cassandra here, because I'm gonna take this, um, game color scarlet red and uh, glaze that over her whole coat jacket thing robe I don't know something coat robe uh, because those are traditionally red and then um, we can uh, do some color separation in the little joints of her armor because the armor is traditionally white um, and we really won't even have to touch the armor plates because they already go up to an almost full white. So easy day there. Lord Wedge coming in with that $5 donation. Give that man some hype. Hammer hands. Yeah, um, over the past, I want to say probably five, six years, they've been like updating a lot of their sculpts. So you have like really really nice new sculpts and they're starting to um kind of like work their way through it um like they just released a brand new uh salamandra tag so if you remember the old tag looked like dog shit compared to this guy this guy is like super badass brand new salamandra so i'm really excited to paint this guy and this is actually kind of what one made me want to do the orange and black color scheme um, cause I know this is supposed to be red, but on the box, it looks like glowy orange. And so that's, this is kind of the color scheme that I want to do for my nomads force. And 
The only reason that Cassandra is getting like the normal color scheme is because the Reverend Moiras are they're like their own thing. And so I'm just gonna paint her traditionally because I know it'll look nice. I mean like the, the Bakunin tag still needs an update, so I'm waiting on that because the lizard still like a little janky looking, so I'm hoping they come out with that soon. But I've been wanting to paint specifically a Taskmaster for a really long time. It's just like I had to finish all my US Ariadna stuff first and then the the Infinity community here kind of dried up a little bit. So I haven't had a chance to really do much else. But finally doing it. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Yep. They even came out with a new... So this is the old Taskmaster sculpt. And they came out with a new one. That's like a multi-kit um, because now the Taskmasters have crazy koalas and a 10-bot. So he comes with the little crazy koala mines and uh, a 10-bot. And you can see that his sculpt is like even better than that one. And that one's awesome. And so this guy, he can have like a big ass rocket launcher. You can see he makes, you can make this guy or, or this guy with the rocket launcher. And so like... I believe the way I have it in my list is that I'm going to do one rocket launcher guy and then this guy with the knife is going to be my lieutenant. Just because I like the knife, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Then we'll have a couple of riot girls, because who doesn't love riot girls? Um, and you can see in the... Uh, Starter kit, you got some moderators, some nice cool like moderators. Um, got the Sin Eater Observant, who's another badass model, Morlock, uh, Riot Girl, and then there's the other Reverend Moira. And then I have a uh, I have the alternate sculpt for the um, Riot Girl with Spitfire, and I believe this one's a newer sculpt than what came in the starter box. So she's like really cool looking. And then the next thing I want to get for these guys is, um, fuck, I think they're called Prowlers. Those guys are really cool. Prowlers are awesome and you can run them as core um, if you wanted to. I probably won't run them as core because they're really expensive. They're like a really, really badass specialist. Um, so I want at least one but they're really cool, so, yeah. And if you wanted to, you could do a whole army of just Reverend Moiras, and they're pretty pretty strong as well. They have, like, active cam uh, optical camouflage and all sorts of cool shit. So, yeah, when we come back tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Saturday, when we come back Saturday, we're we'll working on this guy again. Uh, probably in between when you see me, I'll... Um, have gone in and just put a wash on that orange. Um, probably blocked in the uh, the gun, just because right now it looks a little janky. Um, and we'll start off the show on Saturday working with uh, Cassandra, and we'll like do the red on her uh, on her robe, and uh, start working on the face and the hair. Cause like I said, like the whole the whole point of this is to show how easy it is to make these sort of like because like you would look at a, a metal like unpainted infinity model and a lot of people get scared because there's so much detail and that detail is so shallow and it's a metal model that they're like mm, I don't want to mess it up. But I'm showing you that like just with like really basic color schemes, you can make these models look awesome and ready for the tabletop like really quickly. You can get this done in like a weekend. Um, so when we once we put the wash on the orange, we're just gonna glaze up that orange so it looks really nice and vibrant, and then paint his uh, his uh, knife and his base, and he's done. Like we'll just we'll just knock in some edge highlights, and he'll be done. We're not gonna spend like a crazy amount of time on him because he's just gonna look super clean, really well executed, and he's gonna have a cool color scheme, and he'll be ready for the table. That's kind of what we're gonna be doing with this whole forest, so that hopefully we can get it done really quickly. And same thing for her. Like, probably she's going to take a little bit more time just because 
I have to do hair and her face, which is just going to take a lot more time if I'm doing it all by hand. But otherwise, her like main two colors is red and white and a little bit of black. So she's got like a bodysuit under her armor. That'll be black. Her armor going to be white. Don't even have to touch the white. All we got to do is glaze in the red on her robe and do her face and her hair and her weapons and good to go. Oh no! <laughs> Alright, Elric, I'll see you later, man. Alright. So, appreciate the new people coming in, hanging out, hopefully learning something, watching us do some Infinity stuff. We're gonna keep uh, rolling with this project. Probably find like a halfway point and we'll do the, um, the Shadespire Dwarves, since those are coming out this weekend. Um, so we'll, we'll dedicate like a stream or two to them, but that's pretty much what the the stream is going to be looking like for the next uh, good handful of uh, streams is we're going to be knocking out this infinity project. Oh, Armin, I looked it up last night because I've been like, I've been checking Voodoo and been like, man, when is it going to start up again? So glad it started in March. I can't wait. I've been, I've been going too long without my Forged in Fire. All right, so I'm gonna see who's online. Won't be able to see chat for a minute. Oh, it looks like, uh, looks like Refractal is doing some infinity. So let's, let's host him. Cool, so. Um, for anybody who's new, we'll be back on Saturday. Uh, we, Saturdays and Sundays, we do 5 to 8 p.m. Central Time, so we get a nice long three-hour stream on those two days. Um, ooh, now that I think about it, Saturday might be a little late, so we'll play by ear. I have, I have like a board game meetup thing that I'm doing with some old friends, so uh, Saturday might be a weird time, but I'll let you guys know on the social medias. But Sunday for sure. We'll be back five five to eight p.m. <clears throat> so we're gonna throw a host over to Refractal. Looks like he's painting some Infinity. At least that's what it looked like in the thumbnail. So I could be wrong, but like normal, wait for that host to go through and then jump over to his channel, hit him with those Jack Clubs emotes, and I'll see you guys next time.